New Mexico's Hot Chefs is brought to you in part by Sub-Zero Wolf Appliances, leaders in refrigeration and cooking. So Tom, you have a great restaurant up in Angel Fire. Tell us about it. The Roasted Clove is celebrating its 10-year anniversary, with, and Angel Fire is a beautiful place in the Moreno Valley. It's a four-season resort. Go skiing, biking, fishing. Great views. Gorgeous. Yeah. So what are you going to be cooking for us today? Well, today I'm going to be teaching you how to clean a beef tenderloin and, and create filet mignon steaks. So what do you get? I'm, I'm looking at this piece of meat here, and for those of you who don't know, or those of you who do know, marble's a good thing for meat. That's exactly right. That's how it's that's how it's graded. Yeah. And and you know the the top end is our prime, and we're going to be using a choice cut. And this particular tenderloin is just in between the choice and the prime. It's really really beautiful. Well, I always use prime, but I guess we can go ahead and use this one today. Yeah. Well, I think this will suffice. So what I'm doing is I'm taking off the chain, and this chain is it, it's uh, there's a lot of cartilage and sinew and things like that and we just need to take it off. Yeah, sometimes some chefs that I've seen like to leave a little bit of fat and stuff like that on there but since this has a nice marble texture to it that's going to work for it, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. We're looking for uh, when meat is grated that the the fat really should be on the inside of the meat, not necessarily on the outside. And I've got a secret for you on how to add a little bit more flavor. I'll show you in a minute. Top secrets, I like that. Yeah, good stuff. So what I'm doing here is I'm removing the silver skin. The silver skin is is very tough. Yeah. You can't necessarily chew it very well. It's that gristly. Doesn't digest. Yeah. You know, if you you get a you get a steak and, and you're wondering what in the world is. Well, look at this piece of meat now. You get all that stuff trimmed off. Look at the nice color it has. Yeah. Oh, it's Marble really effect going on in it. Right. It's just it's really coming along. And this is a this is a technique. I know it it, it kind of looks a little daunting, and I've done this a couple of times, so I'm a little I'm I'm, I'm kind of fast up. But this is something that anybody can do at home. You can get your beef tenderloin like this at any of your grocery stores, local grocery stores, uh, or you can get it at some of the bigger warehouses like Sam's Club or Costco or something like that. Right. So you're going to dice this up in pieces? Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to... here. That's right. We're going to be cutting steaks out of this. Right. I'm just about done. We want to get this extraneous fat on the outside off. Man, that looks good already. Right? Yes. Oh, it's delicious. Okay. So, we can save this for another time. So, now, when you cut these pieces... Yes, sir. Uh, are you going to cut them in small little pieces or large pieces, or, or can anybody that's cooking it do it any way they want? Well, usually you're looking for a filet mignon at the small end, you're looking about four ounces. On the large end, eight, ten, even twelve. A guy like you and me, let's do it about eight, in, eight, about eight ounces so we can have a lobster tail. So, yeah, what do you think? I, 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 give me knuckles on that. Yeah, buddy, hey, come uh, on. <clears throat> tell me about this, too. Uh, when you cook it, are you going to leave it like medium rare, rare, medium well? Or what, what do you like? I like it medium rare. Yeah. Uh, cooking temperatures, you're looking for an internal temperature on a rare for about 105. 105. Medium rare about 110, 115. Sounds good. Medium 125, 130. Uh, medium well 140. And I don't want to talk about well done. Okay, so what's going to happen? Here's the deal that I'm thinking about. Okay, you're going to wrap the bacon yep. on the meat. So. How is the bacon going to cook according to the time of the meat? Is that going to affect Well, it's really just going to crisp on the outside. What I'm doing here is cutting steaks that are about 8 ounces. Wow. We're going to get four of these here. And I'll show you one, and then, Bob, I'm going to put you to work. Is that cool? No problem. So we're just going to, in the middle of the, of the tenderloin, we're going to wrap it with this bacon. And I'm using pepper-crusted bacon. You can use any kind of bacon you want. We're just going to spin it around there, and then I've got some wood skewers here, and we're just going to poke it through like so. Now, let me try that once. I, wash, I washed my hands, so it's, it's not going to add any extra flavor on this. So we take this bacon, <laughs> right? Right. And um, leave it as flat as possible. Now, do we do it tight or kind of loose? Tight is good. Tight's good. As it cooks, the bacon is going to tighten up. It's going to kind of get a little crunchy, and it's also going to help keep the shape of the meat. Ah. All very important. So, okay, I have my bacon sitting here and I got yep. this little piece sitting here, so we want to tag that little baby right in there. Right through there. All the way across? All the way across. Mmm. Buddy. Boy, this is going to be great. When I just skewed this thing, it was like sticking it through butter. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes, but don't forget, you can get this recipe on MexicosHotChefs.com. 
coming right up. Tom and Bobby fire up the grill, so stay tuned.